I am here at Sandy Shalas, and thank you for joining me. I am going to kind of weave a little web of a story tonight, and I'm going to wait till the end for the comments because I don't want to lose my track, my, my thinking. So I'm really happy that whoever's here is here. And it was shared, but you know, it's a good story because it's it's kind of the story that goes on everywhere. And I gotta say, hi, I know Marsh is here probably, Mindy's here, and Dre is here from, yay, it's off Fossil Fuels Wednesday, yay. Okay, that's all cool. Let's get started. Uh, so I went to an event the other night and it was a, it was a, it was a political event and I have association here because I am, uh, you know, the, the things I want to have accomplished here with the people I know and it's all, it's all good. So, um, there was a speech by the county executive where I used to live and, uh, he did a speech and what got me was he talked about the stadium in Buffalo. Now, the guy that owns the stadium, the football stadium, owns the Buffalo Bills. He owns the Buffalo Sabres and he owns other sports teams. His name is Terry Pagula and he's a big deal in the Buffalo area. Okay. But that night, the other night, the county executive who takes donations from them, you know, and he's a, he's a, he's a Democrat. I mean, he's got good things going for him, but it's, it's kind of like, I don't know. They never talk about anything with energy that other than, oh, we're going to get green energy jobs. They never talk about the the issues. They don't talk about what's happening. You know, all right, so he's talking to a room full of people that actually he was a fill-in. But my thing was, when he started with the stadium, I, that was it. And it got me thinking for the last few days that I have got to do this. Because Terry Pagula is a person who is a, let's say he's made $5 billion from fracking from fracking in Ohio, started, I think, what, 40 years ago with $7,500 because he went to school. I mean, he's a he's a gas guy, you know, he went to school, but we'll, for that, we'll, we'll go a little into that. But I wanna start with this, um, this article that will just give you an idea of what I'm talking about. And I just have to make sure that I'm on the right one because, um, I've got so many pulled up. Nope, this isn't it. Well, maybe it is. Let me see. Nope, that's not it. Uh, just give me a minute. Oh, and let me know how my connection is because um, I was told the other night, or I got a, a thing from the other night from uh, AT&T, who I pay a literal fortune every month so I can do all this, okay? And that I had exceeded my 16.5 whatever the hell. <laughs> so why can't I find the really good article? Because I just had it up, of course, and it's what I have to start with, and I can find it. All right, here we go. Uh, my goodness. Why wouldn't it be here? Hmm. Well, let me tell you guys, it is a very interesting story, but I really want this. Oh, here it is. All right, here we go. You know, I have an iPad and my research is done on iPad and I have 50 zillion windows open. So here we go. This is actually the Marcellus Drilling News. And they brought to light this article that came out in the Buffalo News. And he talks about, they talk about, you know, they're, they're glowing about fracking. They think fracking is the second coming of God. And it's, it's like, you know, fracking is the answer to everything. Uh, so they talk about Terry Pagula and they say that he's an interesting guy. He's a billionaire who owns both, like I said, the Sabres, the Bills. Um, he also owns East Resources, once a big driller uh, and holder of acreage in the Marcellus Shale, which I live on. But I'm in New York and we have a band right now. 
but it's precarious. Okay, so this, this is talking about, uh, of course, um, yes, dirty fracking money saved the Buffalo Bills. But I really, really want to go into the Buffalo News article that had talked about uh, this Pagula guy was still fracking. And he he fracks in Potter County in, in um, Pennsylvania, and he had done it in Ohio because, excuse me, I was gardening today, and I have burrs in my hair, and I'm on that. But um, he didn't care. No. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> what a night. So he didn't care. And he fracked. He started the whole gas drilling thing in, I think it was Ohio. And he still thinks it's a great thing. You know, he, he, he's the fracking king of Western. He's the fracking king of a lot of places. All right. Let's get into this article because it's really interesting. A roughneck rappels down the wire after setting in place another 90 foot section of pipe on a rig that will drill a hole about four miles into the earth. The 150 foot tall rig chugs along in a rhythmic hum, boring at a relatively slow pace of 33 feet per hour as the bit hits tougher rock. In coming days, drilling will slowly turn from vertical to horizontal, pushing through the shale below to tap the natural gas at halt. Raise your hand. We all know about fracking, I hope. And if not, that's another another episode. <laughs> so early next year, the next phase, hydraulic fracking or fracking is expected to begin on the six completed wells on a five-acre drill pad called Headwaters 145. Natural gas should start flowing by next summer from this mountain community in Potter County who obviously has a bunch of sellout politicians that don't care. And all they care about is money and not changing and not making any changes to lifestyles, but money. And they'll sell out their community because that's what they all do. I'm opinionated, huh? All right. So this is. Terry Pagula's other world, far from the heady lifestyles of the NFL and the NHL, drilling for natural gas is what made him a billionaire four times over and allowed him to purchase the Buffalo Bills and Buffalo Sabres after he sold a sizable share of his operations to bigger companies. Many people thought he was out of the natural gas business after he made his fortune. But behind the scenes, Pagula kept gathering land rights and in the past couple of years stepped up drilling for gas in the mountains of Pennsylvania. And let me tell you, he's got land rights in New York. I am sure the man is drooling and chomping at the bit. And we're going to get around to something else by the end of this and you'll understand why. So his small company has a mass drilling. Small company? Okay, we'll see. Drilling rights on 120,000 acres of leased land in Potter County. And he is betting more natural gas riches wait to be untapped from the Utica shell. In a rare interview, he is both media shy and untrusting of those he believes <clears throat> unfairly depict the oil and gas industry. Pagula said he never had any intention of retiring from the oil and gas business because once you get the taste of that money and you get the rush, how can you retire? It's a sickness. It's ironic to some that Pagula's wealth and his heavy investment in Western New York, including $200 million for his Harbor Center project, is based on fracking. What he oversees just a few miles over the border in Pennsylvania is illegal in New York under orders from Governor Andrew M. Cuomo, who would probably frack the hell out of New York State if he didn't get the political opposition. <laughs> Fracking is a dirty word for some, especially here in Pennsylvania. Remember, this is a pro-fracking document. Uh, Journal. Especially here in Pennsylvania, there are documented cases of harm from the fracking industry on our local communities, including 
to the public health and environment. And I would say that if anyone has been unfairly targeted, it's the communities living in and around natural gas developments, said Joanne Kilgore, director of the Sierra Club in Pennsylvania. Pagula makes no apologies for fracking. Finding natural gas and drilling for it has been his passion since getting out of college in 1973. He's a fossil. Just months before the Middle East oil crisis that sent gas prices soaring, today he strongly believes his industry makes the country less dependent on foreign energy. The old foreign energy. Instead of looking for solutions to anything, they're just going to do more of the same. It's always like it. It's going to, it's not, I don't see when it's going to change, but bleh, opinionated, let's stop it. Re-entering industry. Some believe Pagula was largely stepping away from the oil and gas industry when he bought the bills in 2014 for $1.4 billion. Pocket change. He had sold a sizable share of his natural gas assets to Royal Dutch Shell for $4.7 billion four years earlier, netting him $3.3 billion. Oh, that's surprising. He didn't hide his money <laughs> offshore. Oh, my goodness. Is that an anomaly? Several months before his bill's purchase was approved, Pagula's flagship company, East Resources, received $1.75 billion for drilling rights on 75,000 acres of land in Ohio and Pennsylvania. But five years ago, okay, this is from 2017, Pagula began focusing on Potter County, uh, quietly acquiring acreage little by little, just like they do. Potter County was on his mind because of his years of experience and knowledge of the region, told him that there was potential in the Utica shale formation and another shale field closer to the service, surface. Nearly four decades earlier, Pagula acquired old records of oil and gas drilling that occurred 140 years ago in the Appalachian region. He could make sense of the records because he earned degrees as a petroleum and national, natural gas engineer at Penn State and is a self-taught geologist. Pagula poured over those records and found the geological formations, the Marcella Shell, underneath me right now, that were rich in natural gas. Sometimes, he says, he can't sleep at night because of studying those records. I just love it. Some of those records are over a hundred years old. It's priceless data. We built our business basically off of that. Selling drilling assets has made him a fortune, but he still believed more natural gas was hidden in the deeper shell. Let's just keep going, right? The Utica Formation, underneath Potter County. Geologists also believe this Utica shale that the company is concentrating on could be more productive and profitable than the better known Marcella shale. What's more, Potter County was wide open for gas exploration, Pagula said. So in the past two years, he expanded drilling development work of JKLM Energy, LLC, a closely held company named for his children. Ah, oh, that's so nice. Are they drinking any kind of fracked waste water or radioactivity? Oh, wait, he lives in Boca Raton. Silly me. God knows what they're drinking there. Breathing. <sighs> He employs about 20 people at its headquarters near Pittsburgh. Among the executives is one of Pagula's daughters, Laura Pagula, who is also a geologist. So she went to school for science. She's a geologist, but she went to school to drill the ground and to make money, pollute the water. Up in the mountains and far from the main roads in Potter County, JKLM and its contractors are busy. Pagula's company has gotten permits for 47 natural gas wells in Potter County, according to the Depart Pennsylvania Department of Environmental Protection. Is that an oxymoron or what? Some permits are for wells since drilled, uh, 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 since drilled or fracked. Others are ready to be explored and possibly drilled in the months or years ahead, depending on the market and pipeline infrastructure. A well could cost $10 million or more to build. 
After waiting up to six months to get a permit from Pennsylvania, the land is cleared and the roads are created. An initial crew drills down the first 2,500 feet or so. Next, the big rig comes in to drill down in a vertical and horizontal well that ends in a well 8.5 inches in diameter before um, cement casing is added to reinforce it. It doesn't even sound right. Well, I'm not a scientist, so how would I know? And Oh, Kim says she's got to go. Okay. Bye, Kim. I did one. Uh, so the article goes on and it talks about how he's rooted in what his passion was, which is oil and gas and people in Buffalo who are sleeping uh, are realizing that Pagula's firm is increasing its drilling operations and is the only major player actively operating in Potter County. So he defends fracking and he bristles at people who believe renewable energy sources like wind or solar can replace gas and oil in the coming half century. The numbers aren't there, he says. Well, guess what? Maybe if people like you invested your money in looking for alternatives, the numbers might be there, Mr. Pagula. His wife went to college right up the road from here, too. He met her in a bar. <laughs> and now she's like the, the, the like CEO or whatever it is of the, the an NHL. Uh, no, a, a NB, whatever, the football team, the Bills. So this guy, he says, oh, he acknowledges becoming wealthy in the process, but he notes so too have land over, landowners who have been leasing royalty deals with drilling firms. At the same time, consumers and businesses have enjoyed lower energy costs because of the boom in domestic produced natural gas. But Pagula says he doesn't expect to be drilling New York because of Cuomo's ban. It saddens me, he says, but I don't see it changing. They better hope we continue to produce energy in other states because they're going to need it. Well, they're going to need it because of other things, which I'm going to go into in a couple of minutes. But, uh, you know, as we weave this circle and we talk about this guy, this Pagula guy who who um, is a, a fracker, there was another thing that was going on. And there was a, a controversy down here where I live that our environmental group was involved in a bit. And even one of our state senators was against it. And I'm, I'm going to tell you about that. Um, but in that situation, okay, so it was Pagula. He owns the Buffalo Bills. They kiss his ass up in Erie County. His money is um, spendable. The, 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 you know, uh, nobody talks about substance when they make any speeches. Of course, it's jobs, 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 and economic growth because the county executive up there is taking money from all the contractors, you know, these contracting organizations. And some of the contracts have gone to these uh, from the county have gone there. But that's what I read. And I will not say that that's fact because that's only what I read and factual information. But actually, some of it was on his website. So uh, we go. So. To move on, recently fighting, it was in Cowdersport, Pennsylvania, and they wanted to build on the beautiful Allegheny River a fracking project, um, citing possible health and environmental threats. State Senator Catherine Young, Republican Olean, had sent a letter to the Pennsylvania um, Department of Environmental Protection, oxymoron again, uh, urging the agency to deny the permit application submitted by Epiphany LLC for a proposed fracking waste treatment in Cowdersport, Pennsylvania, on the banks of the Allegheny River, which is beautiful, and echoing concerns advanced by the Seneca Nation, who actually were really front and forward on this one. The Seneca Nation, it, 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 our friends, and uh, they were down there and they did they did so much to make this not happen you know and we don't want fracking waste in new york either but there was some 
crap going on. I mean, they had to go back and forth. The Senate nation, others fire back against cease and desist letters on Epiphany fracking wastewater treatment project. The Seneca Nation of Indians and others receiving ceased and desist letters in connection to opposition of a proposed countersport Pennsylvania-based hydraulic fracking waste treatment site vowed Wednesday not to crack uh, back down. They didn't and they won. It's not gonna be built. He backed out, he backed down, he abandoned the project, and um, the, 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 it's, the plant's treatment process was not proven and that the project ran the risk of releasing effluent into the Allegheny and unacceptably high levels of radioactivity. The Seneca Nation, whose territory lies downstream from the plant, were among those who have rallied against the plant. And yay, 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 thank you, because you guys did a phenomenal job. Phenomenal job. This is the stuff that I talk about. When I talk about local activism, getting involved, it is really important. It is so important. And you know, to go full circle from a politician that I heard who talked about a stadium that's owned by a fracking king who thinks it's just fine. We won against a pipeline in Western New York last year hard fought win so far. And then, you know, they, they don't talk about it. Then we come full circle with this fracking mess. And it, 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 it's really, it's really something. Um, there's a, a gentleman named De Dennis Higgins. He's an activist and he's a former professor at um, University of, um, I think SUNY, one of the SUNY schools in, um, Oneonta. And he writes for Truth Out. And today, you know, I'm on this email list, but he was um, he was making a, a little bit of a thing about in one of his articles about the current in Truth Out, he says the current U.S. gas boom is due to hydraulic fracking of shale beds. This extreme mechanism jeopardizes human aquifers, uses millions of gallons of water per well, and produces toxic flowback whose disposal is linked to water contamination and earthquakes. The product of fracking is often referred to as fracked gas. Okay, so in our state also there's a fight downstate, the CPV uh, power plant that protect Orange County and Pramila Malik and and, and so many others are fighting against. And what's going on now, which has come full circle, because now, because of people like Terry Pagula, who everybody worships in Buffalo, because Buffalo is a football town. And when I moved to Buffalo, I was shocked because I'd never seen anything like it. And I don't know if it's quite the same. They never won anything substantial and hockey i have to say when my daughter was little we went to hockey games that was you know something that we did so it is what it is and but he didn't own it then i won't go now because i don't like terry pagula's thinking gotta make more money gotta make more money and he's not right you know we can make changes by 2050, by 2035, but you have to resist the, the, the greed and the temptation by these people. So Dennis Higgins is talking about now these microgrids in New York, frack state, you know, ban fracking state. Um, uh, the Western New York, we got this frack king that like owns, you know, Buffalo and the sports teams and all that. And here we go about something called microgrids, okay? Don't forget, don't forget I, I told you we won against a pipeline here. But that doesn't mean all of them aren't being put in feverishly down in the other parts of New York State. So, uh, but this is happening everywhere. I'm just giving you an example of my state because it proliferates out to everyone's state. And here we go, because I'm almost to my time limit. Eh, the, the egg timer is going to go off. Uh, he says, 
if you go to the New York State Environmental, uh, is it environment? Oh, Energy uh, Research and Development Association link, you know, you can read these PDFs for these proposals to put these microgrids in tons of towns. They are other names for compressors, just compressors. And they will lock New York State into having to buy fracked gas for the next 40 years. And what will happen is if we don't have a governor voted in who is friendly to green movements or going forward and making change, New York State could very well be fracked. And then they're lying because they're telling us this. He wrote an op-ed in the Ithaca Journal, and that's what I'm going to end with because it goes full circle. It really does. What is REV, Rev, Rev? What's a microgrid? And what do Ithaca, Albany, Ulster, Valhalla, and a bunch of other towns in New York State have to do with it? Or substitute towns wherever you live. Give it a minute and I'll explain how New York continues to beat its head against the door to the future instead of simply knocking and walking through. It has taken years, but everyone, nearly everyone now understands that frack gas has a bigger carbon equivalent footprint than coal once methane hemorrhaging rates reach 2% or 3%. Gas has been measured leaking at rates up to 12% and even NASA finally noticed the spike in methane over the USA. Well, Rev, reforming the energy vision assured us that we can deal with our pollution crisis, our energy crisis, and our climate crisis by burning lots more of the dirtiest fossil fuel on the planet. <laughs> Under Governor Andrew Cuomo's Back to the future plan. We'll also have to build more pipelines to supply the gas. Have you noticed that New York's importation of gas has increased nearly every year since the fracking moratorium? And they keep sucking it up. And I'm getting up. People now understand that pipelines, compressors, and power plants are moving us in the wrong direction. So the New York State Energy Research and Development Authority has cooked up a scheme whereby municipalities submit proposals for microgrids. How nice. Another way to lie and cheat and keep us from going forward. Well, he says, what's a microgrid? Well, it's about 20 megawatts of power from gas turbines, just like the ones at compressor stations with a token solar panel or battery thrown in. Just to make Mimi some of the greenies say, oh, okay, Mimi, it's okay for now. Bull. Well, it's about 20 megawatts of power from gas turbines just like the ones at compressor stations that we all hate. They are marketed as solving our non-existent grid resiliency issues. Or they are billed as peakers. <laughs> peakers, what does that sound like? Peakers, with promises they will only run occasionally. Don't kid yourselves. These dozens of proposals are really meant to add some hundreds, perhaps, thousands of megawatts of gas-fired power to the grid. They will run 24-7. Cuomo has assured us he will cut 40% from state greenhouse gas emissions and build renewable power to supply 50% of the state's needs all in the next 12 years. Perhaps he doesn't plan to be here when the results come in. Possibly he's relying on Isedra's utter incompetence when it comes to measuring emissions to allow him to claim success. According to the Independent System Operator 2017 Goal Book, the state already gets about 46% of its energy from gas and oil. All we should be adding is solar, hydro, and wind power. He says, don't rely on Governor Cuomo to save New York or the planet. For starters, communities have to say no to frack gas and plants being billed as um, microgrids. Okay, so we came full circle. And who is complicit? It is 
the tell of, you know, I, I mean, the political people, the people on these town boards, uh, the, it's <laughs> politicians and they're paid. And, you know, I can go back and say, okay, um, we have to get rid of Citizens United. Yes, we do, because they're all bought and paid for, but this is state. However, as I saw in the donation records of the Erie County Executive, he did take money. He took money from a really represent, a reprehensible person when he ran, Carl Palladino, a racist, an awful Trump supporting, developing, planet-eating racist. And Dennis Higgins is not wrong. We need a change in New York, but we don't need to go to the right. We have a really good state here, and all of you can make your states like this. But you have to get it involved. You have to do something. And Pennsylvania breaks my heart. I don't know what's going on down there. You know, I don't. And Kim uh, um, Dupree was doing her stuff in Pennsylvania, and then she moved to Ohio. She's taking a little break, but she was actually reporting on all of the things going on there. Well, you got to go to board meetings. You have to be involved if you really want to know. You have to be involved because really what's going to happen is we will have the wool. What is it? The wool? We will be lied to. We won't get out of the mess. And like I talked the other night about the Doomosphere, it's a damn shame. But we are there if we continue this way. And we don't have foresight and vision. So at that, I'm going to take a couple of comments. Hi, Bonnie. She says that is awful, lawful, and so low. It all is. And Ed says it's bullshit. Of course it's bullshit. But you got to see what's going on in your own states. And Marcia says, um, yeah, local activism is powerful. Yeah, because you really can't do much unless you do it in your own backyard first. And that's what I say. Kat says, uh, money is nothing. Earth is everything. Of course. I mean, while we're still here and, and, and while we're not shitting the bed today, why not work towards something good in your community? No, why not? We don't know how long we have, but we're not stopping the things that are going to make us go. Bye-bye. I'm sorry to say it, but people like Terry Pagula and the politicians that take money from him and the fracking industry and all of it, it's one big circle. I'm going to put up links and uh, thank you for coming. And good night, everyone. Please share. Peace. We don't want fracking and we want to stop using gas. I am one step away from being gas free when we get our solar panels. But not everybody can afford it. That's another stream. Have a good night, everyone. Bye.